My name is uh, Sebastian Lavoie. Um, I owned, I'm one of the two owners of uh, Sheepdog CrossFit in uh, Port Coquitlam, British Columbia. I've been working out since I was 12, so about 23 years or so. I've been involved with the CrossFit methodology for approximately eight years, I guess. I started in 2004, following the main website. Sheepdog is different uh, primarily because we uh, initiated in a garage, we started in a garage where a classes are, our first class of the day is at 4.45 in the morning. It was primarily law enforcement driven, essentially. We had almost exclusively law enforcement officers and eventually evolved to what it is today and we kept our 445 class and we have a f high percentage of, of law enforcement officers as well still. So our trainers are all primarily from the field, uh, whether it's military or law enforcement, and we basically, what we're trying to do with our people is just get them to work together as a team. We're all used to that, that's, that's how we work, and we don't let sort of anybody left behind. I picked Murph, and the reason why specifically uh, this workout is primarily because there's a lot of there's a big human side to this whole mission, and a lot of people that sacrifice for other people in that mission, and it's just a it's just a mere example. It's the perfect example of what human beings are willing to do for each other. That's my basically my big reason to do it. You know, you go to a box, everybody can talk about, they jump on the box, open your hips on the box, or get that triple extension, or on the GHG, engage your knees, or get that hollow body position on the rings, or whatever. What was the last time that somebody said, who here is scared shitless? Before what? So people don't say that, because it's kind of a taboo subject, right? But the reality of it is, toilet paper does not lie. Okay, so <laughs> the amount of toilet paper that the CrossFit boxes all over the world go through is insane. And that's after scientific research. Okay, so as we go to the things that we don't control, we may be able to narrow, that, narrow down some stuff that we do control. Okay, so we don't control what? The workout. Okay. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Do you control your warm-up? Yes. Essentially, you do. Why? Because there's no time, there's no nothing. You do it at your own pace, right? You control your warm-up. All that you really don't control is the specific elements in the what. Okay? This here is the only thing you have no control over. The rest of it is completely 100% under your control. Where is the loss of control? Where in this whole thing did you ever lose control? Here. Oh my God, I got to do 25 box jump three times. Boo. Okay. Once you realize that, and once you realize that fear are common, fear is common, anxiety is common, call it whatever you want. Whether, whether, this is can, whether it is cancer, whether it is uh, you know, a loss in your family, or whatever the case may be, things that are scaring you to death, everybody goes through them, everybody. What I wanna do is I want you guys and my group um, tomorrow to come over and fill the rigs with fear. So we're gonna basically grab chalk and go on there and write the things that scare you the most. 
And what we're gonna do, once the rig is full of that, we're gonna work through them. So you're gonna do MRF through this rig loaded with all our fears and I can guarantee you that if I write one down right here, like failure for instance, everybody will go, oh yeah, me too. And if I say cancer, everybody will go, oh yeah, me too. Because that's what we do. Okay? Let's drop the fronts and how tough we are and how, you know, um, how good crossfitters we are and we, our feelings, we control everything. And no, you don't. Okay? Those are all fears that are common to everybody. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to work through them, figuratively speaking, over the next two days. Cool? All right, guys. That's it. My fear, uh, my fear, short term, my fear is quitting. Um, you know, once I decide I'm going to do something, um, my fear is that I won't, for whatever reason, finish it. My fear is losing a family member, and I'm terrified of spiders. Oh, whatever up there is uh, losing people that I care about. Okay, so Murph is a uh, one mile run, 100 pull ups, 200 push ups, 300 squats, one mile run. And if doable, you should be wearing a 20 pound vest. It doesn't matter if you have to use a band to do the pull-up, if you have to do the push-ups on your knees, whatever it is that you need to do to basically pay tribute, you do. Show up and get her done. Doesn't matter how long it takes, nobody cares. Everybody cares about you doing it and for you to know the reason why you're doing it. Nothing goes wasted like a hero wad when you don't know who the, re the, the hero is or what they did and why you're doing it. This whole thing 
stems from a mission that occurred as part of the Operation Enduring Freedom. That was in 2005, uh, June 28th, specifically for the Operation Red Wings. The location of that was Korengal Valley in Afghanistan, and it was essentially a reconnaissance mission. They end up fighting for their lives at the bottom of a pit, surrounded by Taliban fighters in an elevated position. Murph eventually makes an assessment that, and, and makes a decision that he also has to go in the open and place a, a call for help for his boys. So he walks in the open, Marcus is yelling at him, take cover, take cover, he's disregarding him. Sits on a rock, starts calling for basically helicopter for extract, for a quick reaction force, not sure what he was calling for, obviously back up, right? And um, he gets shot, falls on the ground, grabs, the, grabs his, his uh, phone again, gets back up on the rock again and starts calling again for his boys, right? At that moment, do you think, from the perspective of a human being, do you think that Murph thought he was going to get back to his initial position. Like he has made up he had made up his mind that he was going to call to get whoever was left of his patrol out of there. And what happened to him was inconsequential basically. He has made he had made up that decision and that's exactly what he what he uh, was awarded the awarded the medal of honor for deserving me so. This has nothing to do with the flag that you're wearing. It has everything to do with what happened and what they did. What human beings are capable of doing for other human beings. What CrossFit is simply is we start together, we finish together. That's the only way to go. That's, there is no other option in this box. There shouldn't be in any box. We don't want to turn this, this system in, into fat, fast food fitness, basically, where people just show up, don't care about each other, and just leave. You know, one day you're the bug, one day you're the windshield. Today you're helping somebody, next day they're helping you. And we work together through things like this. We all have strengths and weaknesses, and it has to happen. It has to be that way. And it's like this in life. It's no different. My athletes today, I didn't prompt them to do that. That's how, that's how we do things here. They simply look after each other and I just every time they do it, they just give me goosebumps and, and get me completely fired up. Love it. How much weight am I doing? I don't know. Last year I did 20 pounds, so I think I'm going to do more, maybe 50. I'm not too sure yet. I will be having a 20 pound vest on. Uh, I'm going to use do Murph with 75 tomorrow. Um, probably about 60, 60, 70 pounds maybe. Okay, that is a good question. Um, I, over the years, incriminately went up, and I think part of me is, is, is wanting to test myself, 
but the biggest is I want it to be a gut check. I don't want it to be just something that I go and do and then I go home and I'm like, okay, that's it. You know, just like people go to Memorial Day, put a little poppy on their uniform or, or on their on their shirts and, and then they go home and, and crack a beer open and, and don't think about it until next year. It's one of those things where this will push me mentally and physically so far beyond my comfort zone that I will never forget it. So every day until next year, I will think about how miserable that workout was and the reason why I did it in the first place. So those guys are being asked to go in the mountains, to do, you know, to, to run missions, make some really hard decisions, um, under fire, carrying incredible load, load of weight, and I'm just gonna make my life as miserable as I can in order, in order to them. It's that simple. Now, would I ever recommend anybody do it with that weight? No, I wouldn't. Because a one mile run with a 120 pound vest, regardless how fit you are, is no good for your knees. And the rest of it is not much better, okay? So we'll do a couple of things. First of all, by having you guys watching us do it, you will understand the humanity in us, which is extremely important. Tomorrow, what you'll see is us breaking down. You're gonna see us breaking down mentally. You're gonna see us wanting to quit. You're gonna see us actually probably want nothing more than quit, but we won't, right? It's important from your guys' perspective to be sitting there to see it from time to time and go like, all right, that's a dude. That's a, a, a dude with a heartbeat with, with you know, the feelings and fears and, and stuff like that. And now all of a sudden we just expose that. And that's very important because then we're all in the same we're all in the same boat, right? You can relate to that, and I can relate to you, you relate to me, and together we grow as a team, right? So that's very important. That's the reason why we decided to have people have an opportunity to watch. It will be painful. Bring your lunches. So we'll be here for a while. Heavy. So what we're gonna do here is basically, I'm gonna step on the scale, establish my baseline body weight, come off, grab the vest, and get on the scale again, and that should give us exactly how much weight there is in that vest. third party to, to basically count reps and no rep when needed. So there's no confusion, you don't think you're done in Korea. Oh, don't worry. I keep track of everything with a little piece of chalk and marks on the floor. <laughs> It'll be the easiest because it, it's counting uh, 600 reps for, for Seb, you know, in between the one mile runs. It's, uh, it's a lot of counting. It's early in the morning. Come on, let's get it real. <laughs> Well, judge doesn't always have to be present, but you know, in this kind of situation with this kind of a, a workout, um, Murph is a it's a grueling, grueling workout, yeah, and it's normally done with 20 pound vest. So add an extra 100 pounds to that. Um, psychologically speaking, the, the athlete undergoes a lot of stress. And for him to count his own repetitions, as well as a lot of time your brain may think that you're doing the movement, 
but physically something very different is happening. Before I'll feel ready and I'll just feel like let's, let's get it done. Um, during, I mean there isn't an ounce of me that won't want to quit, that's an absolute guarantee and I will never let that happen but it will, I will have to go through the mental processes of, of fighting that urge like anybody else and at the end of it I will be completely exhausted. What kind of uh, medical precautions are you taking? We got uh, Chris, our medic here, Good. and uh, he'll be taking care of us if anything happens. Mm -hmm. Not too tight. Is it a bit too tight? Okay. Do you want my honest <laughs> <laughs> honesty on this one? I, I think it's crazy, but no, no, I, I salute them. Like I think that's fantastic. It's uh, definitely. I mean, it's sort of why we do CrossFit, right? Where we do definitely push the envelope a little bit when we come to our own personal training. But uh, that I mean, 120 pound vest is just—it's incredible. But at the same time, quite insane. So. Yeah, if, if it's locked properly, it will stay. All right. Let's do it. It's quite simple, it's, it's 20 names and, and, and all the families and all the people that were involved in, operation, in the Operation Red Wings and, uh, and Murph's crew. I mean, all I got to do and all I did last year when I did 110 pounds was uh, just think about how bad did my day really get right now. I'm only tired and in pain. I'm alive, I'm going home after. to see how we suffered yesterday, me with no weight vest on and using bands for the pull-ups and then to watch them with the heavy weight on is incredible. You know what, they're walking the walk. It's not just talking for them, they're actually living and breathing and doing what they're teaching us, which is a big inspiration. It's really hard, especially the push-ups. That's where it, it can be for most guys and most women too. It's, it's an isolation exercise just on the triceps, just loads of smaller muscle groups. It's usually where you see the fatigue and the breakdown.
Arms are sore. Um, I was thinking of just picking away at it and thought I was a lot better off than some of the other people doing the workout who were doing more weight, so that's what I kept reminding myself. Overall, I feel I feel good. I feel uh, I'm glad it's over. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking during the first half. Oh my God, <laughs> I might have bit off more than I could chew with 75 pounds. Uh, during the second half, uh, I was thinking I've done half. There's no reason I can't do another half. Oh, he'll finish. Yeah, he'll finish for sure. Uh, yeah, he's doing really well. Yeah. Look at him, he's uh, enjoying it, looks like.
feeling.
push up. <laughs> the push ups definitely and just working through it. I also don't like don't don't like being last but so we I, I just wanted to test my soul and really never allow myself to forget the reason why we did it. And I don't think I'll ever forget. All I want is to people to go out there and do something for another human being. Let's put away our differences and, and let's all work together and, and, and make it happen. Be humans, be good humans to each other and just care about each other.